Hal and David have nicely laid out the economics of ad-supported platforms. Uh, in these settings, the users are not the consumers, but rather users, people, are the suppliers of a valuable input attention, and the advertisers are the consumers. So in uh, David's slides, what he didn't uh, dwell on so much was the list of what could go wrong. So I'll, I'll review that. So one thing that could go wrong is a consumer protection kind of harm. Consumers could be deceived or confused about how much data they're sharing, how it will be used, how they'll be compensated. There may be externalities of one consumer on another or internalities that the consumer uh, creates for herself because of her behavioral biases. We often gloss over this point or mention it and move on when we're discussing competition and antitrust, but I think that's a mistake. Without knowledge of what you're buying and the value proposition it represents, consumers can't be effective shoppers. If consumers don't shop and compare, there's no reason for a firm to compete. Why would I lower my price if it doesn't get me any more consumers? So I think this is why the majority of participants in this working group probably come from an agency that has both competition and consumer protection responsibilities because they feed into each other. If a platform lowers its price by gathering less data, there's no way for it to credibly convey that information to consumers today. And consumers just see many pages of legal language and have no idea what they're agreeing to. If a platform improves quality through better filtering of addictive content or by reducing the bias against women in employment ads, how would consumers ever know this? It would be like buying a car without knowing anything about its safety record and the automaker couldn't possibly compete for your business by talking about safety because you couldn't see anything about that uh, attribute. So these important dimensions of competition uh, need to be protected and we do that through the consumer protection function. Uh, if that is working well then we have a level playing field and cons uh, uh, com companies can compete on the basis of attributes that are good for consumers. Um, competition harms. Uh, competition harms can arise on either side of a platform. Um, first of all, we could ask, are users getting paid the value of their attention, the competitive value of their attention? The answer to this will be no in general when a platform has bought up nascent and potential rivals and used exclusionary conduct to render rivals, existing rivals weak or small. These are the allegations in the European Android complaint and the US Department of Justice Google complaint of last month. Users of search do not have a choice in search. Google is the monopolist and therefore Google need not show users quality search results in exchange for their attention, but can instead show them pages and pages of ads. Okay, this is the endless scrolling. I remember back in my youth when I did a search and I got nice clean blue links of useful information and now I have to search again through the results to find the thing that I'm looking for. So lack of competition uh, for the users leads to underpayment of those users in terms of the innovation and the quality that they want. Using its market power, Google can divert users away from competitive threats such as specialized search as Hal described. Either the competitor search engine appears on page five or well below any spot the consumer is likely to see, or Google can charge that competing search engine a stiff advertising fee to appear up at the top. Okay, either way, the rival is handicapped because they have less traffic because um, they're on page five, or they have to pay a high price for that traffic. And when quality of search results leads to economies of scale and higher quality results, then, sorry, when when the quantity of traffic which Google can impact leads to economies of scale for the rival search engine and higher quality results for the rival search engine, then the anti-competitive conduct protects Google search from competition on the long run. Um, users will not uh, earn a competitive value for their attention through Facebook either, as I argued in a paper with David Dinelli last spring. A same idea, uh, Facebook purchases nascent rivals, shuts off interoperability of compliments, then that restricts consumer choice in social networks, which in turn lowers innovation and quality. What's quality? Good content moderation and algorithms that keep out exploitative content and clickbait and so on. Um, in the absence of competition, uh, consumers will not get the quality uh, that would be delivered in a competitive market. Then we have advertisers. Are advertisers paying a competitive price for search ads on Google, digital display advertising on the open web, and display ads that are on Google and Facebook owned and operated sites? 
Because Google dominates search, it also dominates search advertising, has market power in that market, as we heard from the CMA. Um, importantly, Google has owned and operated ads, but also positions most of the rest of the open display ads through its ad tech stack. This makes it easy to answer BX's question of whether we want a merger between Facebook, that handles 40% of display, and Google, that handles 50% of display. Clearly, that would be a problem. Uh, so no, we don't want that merger. Um, and market power, of course, allows platforms to charge above competitive prices for their advertising space and their advertising services. The ad tech stack is um, well des described in the CMA submission, so I will not uh, spend any time on it here, except to just highlight that, remember, the website charges the advertiser one price and then pays the publisher a lower price and keeps the difference between the two, which is known as the take rate. Google sells its tools to advertisers, it sells its tools to publishers, and it runs the market in between, where it has between 60 and 90% share. By acting on behalf of both the buyer and the seller, setting the pricing rules, and limiting transparency into outcomes, Google has the incentive and ability to both generate a large take rate and keep it. Okay. Google, how did Google get this market power? A lot of uh, acquisitions in ad tech, as well exclu as exclusionary conduct. Another paper I wrote, again with David Danielli, talks about the bundling of services across properties. Uh, prevention of interoperability, exclusivity contracts, and limiting information and transparency as being the tactics that generated the market power that we see today in the ad tech stack uh, held by Google. The higher prices paid by advertisers, often local businesses, generate harm to those advertisers, obviously. They're losing that money. To the extent that those prices are a marginal cost of obtaining, let's say, a customer or a sale, we expect those higher prices for ads to be passed through at least partially into higher prices for goods and services that consumers pay. More generally, these higher prices or the higher take rate in the ad stack uh, disincentivize businesses from investing in online content or in new ventures because the rate of return is below the competitive level. So a newspaper that is losing part of its ad revenue to a high take rate from the ad stack is not obtaining a competitive rate of return, they're not going to invest in as much news. Likewise, a business that does a business plan and realizes it's not profitable to invest because consumer acquisition cost is so high, won't invest in that, uh, again, harms consumers. So lack of content, lack of investment, lack of innovation uh, due to higher advertising prices also harm consumers. So we have basically three problems. Consumer protection problems, so we don't have a level playing field. We have uh, harm to users uh, from like lacking uh, quality and innovation that they would get if their um, eyeballs and attention were monetized in a competitive market. And lack of uh, content and innovation harms due to higher prices paid to advertisers plus the harms directly to those advertisers from high prices. So that's based, that's an extremely quick tour over a very large section of GDP, but that's how the harms uh, play out.